The following production is brought to you by the Talkin' Buds Leaf Show. Here we go. Talkin' Buds Leaf Show. I'm going to bring the heat out of the gate right now. And just say what a lot of people have got Twitter open in front of me right now. Well, a lot of people are saying and what a lot of people are thinking. No emotion, like no like spazzing, no craziness, like cards on the table, bring the heat off the top. This hockey team's pretty mid. Like this is a mid hockey team. And there's tons of reasons for it. But like you watch them and they have three NHL superstars with a lot of offensive firepower and some nice pieces. But as an overall hockey team, they're pretty mid. I mean, could you make that argument over the past several seasons that like they're kind of just Again, here we go again, just built the same way, just kind of a, a mediocre hockey team, missing pieces, but just have the firepower to to make a comeback like they made against Tampa. Like, that's... Yeah, yeah, I guess you could in a, in a way, but I don't know, man. Like, this, this defense core is awful, and the defensive details as an entire team outside of the six guys on defense is awful awful you look at their defense right now and it's like they're 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 banged up like Lilligren's out McCabe's out you've got three NHL caliber defensemen in Brody Riley and Giordano you've got William Legison who's a who's a nice hockey player but he's a sixth seventh defenseman at best you've got Simone Simon Simone Benoit, who is an AHL hockey player. That's what he is. He had a he had a nice moment or two tonight, but like he's an AHL hockey player. And then you have John Klingberg, who is without question one of the worst hockey players I have ever seen. I'm 35 years old. I've been watching Maple Leafs hockey for as long as I can remember. He has a lot of offensive potential and upside and talent. Not enough. (laughs) Not enough. But. Not enough. He, like, it's like he doesn't know how to, like, it's like he doesn't have a brain in his head when he's out there. Like, he, he, he's not thinking. He's just looking around. And he's, like, there is a, there is a play circulating on Twitter right now. I don't, I'm not, we're not going to show it because I don't want. Uh, Sportsnet coming after us for showing their broadcast, but it was on the second goal, the the one that Giroux scored. And it's just 15 to 20 seconds of John Klingberg just falling down, out of position. It's it's actually, like, I'm having a difficult time articulating it because it's it's tough to articulate how terrible this guy is. Yeah, you gotta hand it to the marks. They... They, they got it right on this one going into the season saying this guy's awful. And I sat here and was like, oh, I'll give him a chance. They were right. The guy can't defend. He's an awkward hockey player. He's not a very good skater. Um, when he's stationary uh, at the point in the O zone, he can make a pass, I guess. But yeah, he's just, he's just a very funky, awkward hockey player who finds himself in some awful situations on the ice. And yeah, I, I got to hand it to the little nerdy marks. They were right. This guy sucks. You can point to the fact that they're banged up and yes, they'd be a little better if Lilligren was in and McCabe was in, but we, everyone said all off season, like this defense core is nowhere near good enough. And you add the injuries to the mix. It's, it's, it's ugly to watch. And then you watch them as a team. Like you and I are sitting watching the game and you said multiple times, you're like, this is some of the worst defensive hockey I've I've ever seen. They're giving up five goals a game. Like it's every night they're giving up five goals. It's like 
how much can you pin that on goal? Like some of the goaltending has been very bad, but like there's, there's guys just, just, just wide open, just not covered in, in the D zone. It's just, I, I don't care if it's gold to all around defensively when you're giving up five goals a game, like you, you're awful. And, and you think about last season, like the thing they did improve on was their goals per game and, and giving up less goals per game. And like their goaltending was, Seemed like it was pretty good because of that. Maybe it was actually that good that the fact they were only giving up two to three goals a game, but so far this season, they're, they are back to just trying to outscore all their problems. And we, and us, us Lee fans know what it's like to watch this team when they're trying to outscore problems. And it's not, it's not pretty. No, it's not. It's, it's really ugly. Actually. When you look at how they play defensively, like, is that, I, I, it, it, is, that, is that what? Like, I was going to say, like, it's it's definitely a talent issue, particularly when it comes to their blue line personnel. But it's also a bit of, like, a coaching and a buy-in issue. Like, like I, I don't think Mitch Marner was very good defensively tonight. I thought he was kind of lazy. I don't think anybody was good yeah, defensively like it's, tonight. Yeah, it's just, and not, you're right. You're right. I don't want to pick on Marner. Like, they're, they're all, they're all. That, 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 that top line, as good as they were against Tampa, they were. They were. I didn't even notice them on the ice tonight. Even oh, strength. They were. They, they, yeah. they did nothing. Like it's, it's just. I. I'm not like the Tampa game was really great and it was. It was awesome to watch and you always love clowning Tampa like that. But it's just. I don't want that to distract from the fact that yeah, this hockey team is pretty mid, and I, I'm not. I've. I'm not going to go down this road again because you can just go back to last our last episode where I literally screamed about it for 10, 15 minutes. But I just don't think like a- another example against the Sens where it's like kind of in and out, not ready to play, not paying attention to detail, structurally a disaster. Like it's like, at what point are we going to say, let's get a new voice behind the bench. Let's try something new here. Like this isn't, it's the same old, same old, same old, like you said off the top. There's a log jam in this division. Like there's the, the parody in this division is a thing. Um, my goal of them winning the division going into the season is gone. Um, 13 games in. And other than the Bruins, like they're, they're gone unless they go on an epic loser, which I don't think is happening because they actually have one of the, they're one of the few teams in the league that actually has elite goaltending from both goaltenders. Other than that, you look at that division and it's just, it there it's a mid it's not like the division's mid it's just like now like everyone's kind of caught up to each other in terms of like talent and shittier teams have gotten better and and good teams don't have the cap room to improve and it's just this division is this is parody at its finest th- this division and, and they're just kind of rating that like they all kind of have the same record like they're all within six points of each other yeah yeah, it's um, it's something. Like you kept saying we tonight. The Leafs are playing down to their competition, and it's like, are they though? No, like are they? And, and we know the way they play against these teams. Like they've played Tampa, they've gotten Tampa twice, but you know what happens when they play Montreal, when they play Ottawa. Like they, they always play down to Ottawa. But I, I don't even know if they're playing down to Ottawa anymore. Like Ottawa, Ottawa's a pretty good team. Like they got a lot of good. Young defensemen, I know they're a little, little banged up as well, but like they're 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 a good team, man. I'm kind of puzzled sitting here because it's like I'm not angry, like I'm not sitting here spazzing and like pounding the table like I was last week. Because it's just like like what are you gonna do? Like this is the team, and and I think someone's gonna watch us and they're gonna go, oh my god, 13 games in and you're already overreacting and saying they're mid, and it's like, yeah, I am because. We go into every season w- with Stanley Cup expectations for this team. Like, how many times when you watch the talking heads on Sportsnet or TSN or on the radio, cup window, it's a cup window. This team's in a cup window. It's like, well, if this team's in a cup window, that ain't going to get it done. That is nowhere close to getting it done. Nowhere close. So they're they're in a situation with the cap right now, currently, 
and with injuries where it's like they can't they can't make a big trade right now. They can't really do anything right now. That's why I'm so hell bent on removing Sheldon because that's something you can do right now. But like, w- what are you gonna do? You just gotta try and fire the coach. That's yeah. what that's the, you're right. That's the only thing you can do. It's, no, and, and you gotta hope that, like that they they can play better defensively. Like yeah. let's just get that straight. Like they they are this isn't. I know they're missing a couple of guys off the roster from last season, by the way, Justin Hole starting to starting to get that little uh, reputation of uh, Leaf fans just decide they want to gang up on somebody and they leave. And all of a sudden you go, oh, the guy actually wasn't that fucking bad. Like, I mean, the John Klingberg is literally awful. <laughs> like, you know, like he's so bad. And then, I, I, yeah, I don't know. They, they they can play better defensively though. Like they they can. Like there's there's this isn't they aren't doing this all year. Like they have to figure it out. They have to have more attention to detail in terms of covering guys who are wide fucking open in their own zone. Like how many goals this year are you, is a guy on another team wearing another sweater just standing by himself and there's three dummies in leaf uniform just looking around like three complete idiots not covering anybody like they, they got to figure it out. Like this is at some point, like I obviously we're not Sheldon guys. So we're biased towards like moving on and getting a new, getting a new face in. But like, these guys are big boys. They're professional hockey players. They get paid a lot of money. Like they gotta, they gotta, they gotta figure it out themselves too. Like you gotta fucking cover your man when you're coming back in your own zone. Like, come yeah, on. I, I, I don't, I, that's why I like calling them mid because I don't think defensively they were awful against Ottawa. And like, but I don't think they're they're an absolutely terrible team. They're, they're they're resetting to their default setting, and their default setting, it's like when you restart a computer. Like when their default setting is just let's Outs- outscore everything. Yes, like they've gone back to that default setting that they've always been in, where it's just like we don't care about playing defense, and we're just gonna we have a bunch of guys on this team who have some firepower. And teams could score five on us, but we could score six. And we're going to rely on our super... If our superstars aren't firing on all cylinders, we don't win. Yeah, and they need to just, like... it's it's It it obviously isn't something that they go in the room and just be like, oh, we got to... Like, it's something you have to, like, fight. Like, it takes effort to look around and realize that, like, let's not fall into this shit again. Like we do this all the time. Like we need to stop. We need to go back to last season where for the majority of the year, we were in the top 10 and goals allowed per game. Like we were actually playing better defensively and our goaltending was better. Like that, that's that they really just need to fight it and get back to that, to that, to the way they played last year. Let's talk about uh, the goaltending really quick because Samsonov gets the hook and looked awful against the lightning. A guy just could not move laterally right now. Like he side to side, like he's lost. Like he's just no feel for where he is in his own net at all. Tonight against the Sens, Joe Wall was it was not his best game. It, y- yes, the team in front of him defensively was atrocious, but there's a couple goals tonight that he he needed to have and he didn't have. The the last one that he gave up where he like yeah, went I'll around chalk to, play that up the to, puck. to to a rookie goalie. Okay, but to a rookie-ish goalie. Yeah, but it's it's goaltending for them right now. It's not they're not at a point I don't think where it's like it's like a five alarm fire, but it's not great. It's not great, but it, you no. look I was thinking about this today like if that's kind of the thing with the league right now. Like like look at the Oilers. They just sent Jack Campbell down to the American Hockey League. And the outside of like the elite five, six guys, everyone's goaltending is is kind of middle of the road. Yeah. I mean, it, it begs the question that like last year when they were playing well defensively, it was it them actually playing well defensively, or was it their cause Samsonov was playing well when Murray came in, he had a couple of good games as well. So I mean, everything just has to get better. Like they they are producing points they are scoring goals the right guys have the right amount of points austin matthews leading the league in goals he's up there in points mitch marner's up there all of a sudden mitch marner had no points all of a sudden he has the most points at any canadian player in the league like the guy nylander's nylander's point point streak streak. like yeah tavares has gone a little cold but i will say that like 
I was I'm not to beat a dead horse here, but like also like I I just think the awful play of Tyler Bertuzzi has not helped them at all. Like that was a guy you were actually counting on to be like say what you want about Mike Bunning. Like Mike Bunning brought it every night for the most part. And well, he got a goal. He got a goal tonight. Yes, yeah, so if he was standing in the right place. But like other than that, yeah. like the guy, the guy, like he's got to be better. Yeah, he's in that third line with with Domi. Like we were clamoring for putting Domi three C. We talked about that. It happened. You got a big goal. He's skating or set better. up uh, Robertson for Robertson a big goal tonight. Comes up. It's yeah. like let's finally give this guy some fucking runway. Let's stop sending him down after two fucking games. Yeah, you made that point while we're watching uh, watching the game, and I completely agree with you. It's like just just leave him here. Like there's like, nobody. Who, who, like the depth's yeah. awful. Yeah, like like just leave him here. Let him develop. Let him figure it out yeah. in the league. Let him get better. Like stop overthinking it. You need all the help you can get right now. Shit or get off the yeah. Pot for Robertson's that guy right a guy now. who brings wheels. Like just just leave him up. Like yeah. just leave him up. He and Domi seem to have a nice thing going. Like just let them. That's a the second game in a row where they've got a big goal from the third line, and it's those two guys leading the way. So just let them let them figure it out. Yeah. I'm I'm a hundred percent with you on. Yeah, that. like I, I'm like right now where I stand is, I want the coach gone. I, I think that needs to happen. We're, but we both want that. We both agree with that. I think it's just you're, you're wasting precious time here keeping him around. But also, we they are mid, but you look at the standings. Like, everybody's still there. They're, they're, they're a four-gamer away from from being, like, from all of this kind of going away. I, I still believe, I'm not... Like they're not a playoff team. Yet, no, that's you know? what like, I mean not, when I yeah, say like when I say that's why I like the term. Out. That's that's why I like calling them mid because they're not they're not awful. Yeah, but they're not in in terms of like if we're coming into this season with Stanley Cup expectations and we're in a quote unquote cup window, they're not they're not there right no, now. No, and I, it, it's just hard to like accept. Like I, I have a lot of. Like all the guys you have on text while you're watching the game, like I, I mean, I find that the majority of like hardcore leafers are having a hard time watching the games this year because it's also tough to just realize that, like what you said earlier, like this is this is the team. Yeah, like, this is. There's no what first as, of all, yes. as we get closer to the deadline, I think the chances of making a deal go up, but. That's not like we're still months away from that. This team is not like you'll get Jake McCabe back here. Lilligren's going to be gone for a while. This is the team. So you need, you got to figure this out with these guys. That's why I love your take about like just let Robertson, like no more sending him down. Let him figure it out. Leave Nyes up with M- Matthews and Marner. Let him figure it out like 100%. One thing that is going to be difficult to figure out that I've been waiting to table with you based on your commentary watching the game tonight is this Ryan Reeves situation because they're in a situation with their salary cap where he's got to be in the lineup every night. And I believe the quote (laughs) that you said when we were watching the game tonight was, He's getting harder and harder to defend. Yeah, yeah. Because you've been a a staunch Ryan Reeves. Well, no, you it's not that you've been like a defender. It's just you've said, like, I'm not gonna no, sit I here. want the deterrent. Like, I'm a yes. deterrent guy. I'm not defending him playing hockey. Like he is a, a, a lowly fourth line winger, but now it's like getting to the point where like it is becoming quite obvious that like he's he he's can't never play. on the ice in a good situation yeah, he can't you know? play like he's he, he really struggles the thing with thing with uh for me is i agree that like his sheer presence might deter some um silliness from your opponent but i i, I don't see him like you never see him when's the last time you saw him like lay a big hit when's the last time you saw someone some face wash somebody When's the last time you saw him get in somebody's face? Like, even the Marchand thing, like, he says after the game, like, well, I didn't have a chance to get out there on the ice with him. It's like, okay, then grab the first guy you see when you jump over the boards and start punching him in the face. Like, what Like what? What are we doing? And I think that's where a lot of people... You have the naysayers who write from when they signed him. They were just like, I hate this, like, I and have just hated it from the get-go. But then you have this other... Um, group of people like me and yourself who liked it 
But now it's gotten to a point, like you said, where it's like it's difficult now to justify having them out here, out there. But if he was doing things and making a difference physically, and like I, I don't care. Take two minutes. Like after the after Marchand can opens Lilligren, I don't care, man. Grab the first guy you see and start wailing on him. I honestly don't care. Like, and I don't think anyone else would. But he that doesn't really happen. And so all that's happening is he goes out there, skates around, and they get scored on. A lot when he's on the ice. I feel like when I'm when I'm learning is you you just can't fucking win with these guys. Like it's just you bring him in. Like I want him in because I want a guy who's who's willing to step up. Because like it, it's the regular season. We know not every regular season game is intense. Like it. The reason why he hasn't been in it is because there hasn't really been anything to be in other than that scenario in Boston. So. But still, when's but, the last time you saw him like lay a big hit? Because he's just he's behind the plate, yeah. you know. Like he doesn't have he can't lay a big hit because he's too slow to get there. Yeah. But like, what's what's gonna happen is they're gonna take him out of the lineup. They're gonna play a team. They're gonna play the Rangers. Jacob Truba is gonna f- fucking murder somebody, and then he's gonna and then he's gonna be in the press box, and then all of, all of the guys like me are gonna be like, "Well, you should have." You know, like he can't win. Like it's yeah. like. It really is, like we've said this in the past, it really is a team mentality to just play tougher because bringing one guy in who's just tough and isn't... Especially when he's like a fourth liner. Yeah, you it's know, it's like one it's, thing if you have a guy like Tom Wilson who can who can actually contribute. But when you bring like in that, a... That's, that's one of exactly. one. Exactly. Well, th- that's know, what like, I mean. That's what I mean. That's, that's what makes a guy like Tom Wilson a one of one. But when you've got a guy like Reeves who like... L- he can really only do one thing. You're like, you're learning that like, it's really not, it's not as impactful as you might think. You can't, when you bring a guy like that, I know, I know. And yeah, it's either just one night. He's not involved. He's awful. He's going to, he's doing nothing on the ice and there's no physical. Like there was no physicality in that hockey game. Mm -hmm. There was none. Like what we're, I don't even, I don't think I even saw a scrum. Like there was nothing. No. And then, but there's going to be that one night where they get their faces punched in and and you're going to want them out there. Like it's, or somebody starts that, running around. Yeah, that's yeah. just what happens. Like, I mean, uh, it, it is like, I'm not, I, 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 I don't want people to think I'm defending him as a, as a hockey player, but as someone who's watched this team get embarrassed physically and, and you saw what Luke Shen, like I know Luke Shen was, is a way better hockey player than Ryan Reeves is in terms of what he contributes shift to shift. But you saw how important it was for him to be in the lineup in the playoffs. And I know Reeves probably might not be in a playoff roster, but I don't don't know. There's going to be a time where, where he is going to be useful. And then when he's not there, it's going to suck. So I I don't know. It's a, it's a, this is why enforcers are no longer in the game because it's just, they, they cannot contribute enough in, in today's hockey. it's it's getting tough to defend him, but I don't know. I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready to give up. He started the season like that. Like he he started the season playing that role, and then it's just kind of tailed off. I just don't think there's been any like there's there's no physicality in hockey. Like there's the odd game that gets chippy, but like there's been a I'd say most of the I'd say ten of their thirteen games, fourteen games, how many games they played. I like there hasn't been not there's been nothing. Well, you're making the the argument right now that everyone who hated the signing made they were just like okay like you brought this guy in and you so do you those th- people have never played hockey before yeah, yeah. okay i know you just I, you I, just pulled out that you've never played the i game. know i don't like i didn't play at an extremely high level i did not but like if you were just remember back in the day like just just being and we're like we're a little bit older i don't know what minor hockey is now but like I remember watching you play and like, there was some, there was some dust ups mm-hmm. on a Tuesday night, you know? And like when your team doesn't have, and you had one of like the toughest kids of your age group to play on your team and he'd go out and fucking hammer somebody. Yeah. It was awesome. You yeah. know, like it's just that that's the, everyone who loves Reeves. Like they have that in them. Yes. It's like, yes, you know what it's like yeah. when your team is soft and, and can't defend themselves. And there's no one to go out there and like set the tone and set somebody straight like that. That it's, it's like a innate thing. And in, in, it's like in, in a man's like mental nature in sports, you know, like, I don't even know what the, 
what I just said, but <laughs> you, you know what I'm trying to say. Yes, I know. Like, I know. If like you, Ricky here. If but. you like that, if you like the the signing, you can you re, you're somebody who relates to like you understand the emotional impact. Yeah. a guy like that has. Yeah, and, and, and which the is most what Matthews moments. Matthews when Matthews gave Reeves the belt after the second game of the season against Minnesota. That's basically what he said. That's essentially what he was getting at was him going out there and fighting Marcus Foligno. That got us back in the game. But, like, a sense then, all he's really done is get scored on. Another thing that sucks for him, too, is, like, there's not a lot of dudes who are going to fight him. Mm. Like, he, he's he got to be fighting Marcus yeah, Foligno uh, yeah, or, uh, or Lucic, who yeah. wasn't in the lineup in Boston. Ar- or, Arbor Jack. Yeah, like, yeah. there's only... Because like, that's, twice, that's twice they've played Tampa now, and Janot has not wanted any part of it. No, him. Yeah. no. So, it's just... I don't know. Yeah, it's... I don't know. Anything else you want to touch on? Yeah, I just got to give the nerds credit for the John Klingberg thing. He is... He, he's he's really bad. Yeah. And you were you were right. I didn't know because I've never lost him for a prolonged period of time. I just wanted to believe. It's, but it's like... But he's really bad. You sit and you watch hockey all the time and you've watched all these different guys come through the organization and you've, you've, you've sat and gone, this guy stinks. This guy's no good. Like... Saying John Klingberg stinks doesn't, it's not enough. It, it, it's not enough. Like, this guy, it's almost difficult to comprehend that he's a professional hockey player. That's how bad he is. I have never seen someone look so lost every shift he's out there. Every single shift. he's lo- He makes a boneheaded play. Once a shift. And then you have instances like tonight where he'll have an entire shift where it looks like he's not even like present mentally. He's just out there skating around, falling down. Yeah, their 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 decor is Oh, they're yeah. It sucks how Connor Tammy. I think I think honestly, I think if you inject a little Connor Timmy's in this lineup, it, it, I think it will make a difference, to be honest. With you. A guy who can actually move his feet and move the puck around. Like they're really missing a guy who can like take a puck and move it around. Cause I like TJ Brody, but that guy's not a puck mover. Like he's a guy who just is good at gap control. At Would you times. feel, like, do you think, okay, you're heading into a playoff series. Your six defensemen are Riley Brody, Giordano, Lilligren, McCabe, Timmons. How would you feel about that? Well, no, it's still not good enough. Yeah, because so, I just don't like like TJ Brody's a good player, but TJ Brody's your number two defenseman. It's just not. Yeah, it's, it's not going to be it. Mm. It's it's just not it. I like him, but he's not that guy. Yeah. And Riley, I love Riley too, but Riley's also just a a, a step below some other top horses in the league. Yeah, as well. a step like, like he's. Know. I think Riley's been like you said it a couple episodes yeah, ago. I think he's been pretty good. He's been a horse to yeah. start the season. Like, yeah. but when push I, I comes to show, there shove. hasn't been a one night this year where I've been like, oh my god, Morgan Riley. That there hasn't been one night this year. But you're right. If you're if you're stacking him up against some of the elite guys, yeah, in the, the guys league, who've won the cup over yeah. the past couple. Seasons, yeah, it's not. It's, yeah, he's. You're right. He's he's like a rung below. Yeah. The the elite of the elite in, yeah. in the league. Yes, a hundred percent. I don't know, man see what happens i kind of hope they like i know it's better for business when they're not playing super well but i it it would be nice for them to go on like one of those like four game heaters and kind of put a gap between them and other teams and have guys like uh shut the fuck up well maybe going to sweden and just getting out of here and going on it on a, a unique tr- that's not just a road trip that's like a unique that'd be trip. cool yeah, That'd be fun. That's a unique trip overseas where it's like that's going to be like a bonding experience. You've got like there's tons of Swedes on the team. Mm-hmm. Like I think that's going to be that that might be exactly what they need. Yeah, poor uh, Jimothy Lilligren. I know. will be able to play in uh, in Sweden. I know that sucks, but yeah, they got a lot of Swedes, and I don't know. I'm pretty. I got. I, I don't think I can. I think on my schedule. I'm like I don't know if I can watch the Friday game. I think, I think work is, is obligations one, are getting in the way is that for the that one. That's one? At, is that the one that's at 11 a.m.? Yeah, I think you you were saying the times earlier, the ones at yeah, so, 11. So they play, so after Saturday's game against Van, um, Vancouver, they don't play until the following Friday. Okay, so Friday at 2 p.m. against the Red Wings. Yeah, that's not going to work. 
And then they got Sunday at 8 a.m. Throw that on the some, Minnesota some football. Wild. Yeah. Sunday yeah. at 8 a.m. against the Minnesota Wild. And then 2 p.m. on November 24th against the Chicago Blackhawks. Yeah. The, the 8 a.m. Sunday. I'm down. I'll tell you what. I've never been more down to do a post-game show than after an 8 a.m. start against the yeah. Minnesota Wild. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just yawning before starting. Because you know, this you one. and I like post game shows are not. Sometimes you just got to do them, but post game shows are not our our bread and butter. No. no. And so we should get the hell out of here because the last two minutes we've just been kind of rambling on about nothing. I think for the past like ten minutes we've been rambling on about nothing. Oh, no, I thought today going was... on some absolutely ridiculous rant about Ryan <laughs> Reeves and <laughs> fucking rep hockey. Like, yeah. what the fuck was I talking about? <laughs> But, all right. Uh, some, some of you legends know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Thanks so much for checking us out, everybody. We should say hi to all the new subs. Our last episode took off, got tons of comments, tons of engagement. We appreciate every last one. Even those of you who love to sign on and call us pigeons, go ahead. We love it. All the engagement is, is what we're looking for. So thank you so much for that. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button below. If you haven't left a comment or a review, Please do so as well. Spread the word. Tell your friends. We really appreciate it. We'll catch you guys next time.